Hey guys, I'm here with my 2009 Mini Cooper um, R56 non-turbo, and one of the things I I still use my um, my iPod Classic hooked up to the original radio, so and it actually plugs in through the USB and the audio jack right over here. But what I don't like is that it's like not really a good place to store it down there or anything. So what I want to do is go ahead and put it into a um, into my armrest between the seats. So what I picked up was six foot cable extension, which is only about six or seven bucks. It has the same connections, which is a USB and a um, audio jack, and then it's about six foot long, and then it has a USB here and the audio jack. So basically I'm gonna plug this in here and run it underneath the center console. And I already took out the um, the armrest that was here so I already took out the armrest using uh, Torx the two screws here so so I basically have to mod that so that way because I, because I want to put this switch this connector inside the armrest so let's go inside the shop and um, see what I did to modify the armrest okay guys I'm in my shop um, I already started working on it several days ago so this is the armrest that I pulled out so basically that top just comes right off and after you take out the uh, some screws um, that screw on the bottom here and then to take this whole piece off you just take out those six screws um, on the bottom and so when that comes off Here you have the the button to unlock it, and in that button there's actually two springs that are sitting in situated in there. So just make sure you don't lose these two springs like that. So basically, I was trying to decide where to put this connector. First, I was thinking I'm going to go ahead and put it in the back side, but then there was enough clearance to when it pivots down that it will actually hit the the back of the bracket if it was um, flush like this. Then I thought about making a spacer to stick out but then it'll stick out pretty far so it'll still keep it clearance. Then I finally realized that there's some space in the front end here. So I decided to go ahead and mount it on the front side. So basically I went ahead and um, drilled a hole. It's about 7 8 inch hole that I needed there. And I drilled a hole on the back side of the bottom piece. That's where the cable is going to go out with the grommet. So obviously this will not sit flush all the way because there's not enough room in there. So I needed to make a spacer for this. This comes with a bracket like this. But I didn't want to use this because this looks like to be mounted underneath the dash. So I didn't want to use that, so I had to make a spacer. So this is the spacer I made. I went ahead and glued this to this um, round piece. And this is basically from a one inch um, union for water pipes. So basically it's this PVC pipe and just cut shorter. So basically what I'm going to do is uh, this will be on the front end like this to give it a little more uh, push forward a little bit more to have more back space and then on the other end I'm going to have a, a connector okay this is one of your best uh, I never owned one of these but this is one of the best drill bits uh, I should have owned one of these years ago these um what they call it step drill bits so I use that to drill the hole on um, this side and the other side. So what I use is PVC plumbing pipes. So normally this this piece, this this uh, hex ring comes separate, so you can mount it to the bracket. And I used uh, a certain type of glue, and I'll show you that when I actually have to glue it to this. It's not actually glue; it uses UV light to cure it, and it's much better than glue and stronger. So what I used is this PVC pipe, it's a one inch coupler, 
and a reducer and I actually used the reducer for one inch to three quarters. I'm showing a half inch here because I can't find another spare to do that. So basically that's going to lock in and glue it in and lock it in in that connector. So all this had to be cut down a little bit shorter to make it fit. This reducer had to be cut down shorter like that. And then I actually had to use this drill bit to drill it out a little bit bigger so it wasn't getting um, interference. You can see it's actually much thinner than it uh, normally is. Then I have to cut the, after I attach this to the coupler, I had to cut that down too to get it to fit. So basically this will, this is going to be my locking to lock it in in here. So here are all my pieces threaded through. So I got my um, the nut that's um, attached to the coupler, and that's going to screw on like that. Then basically I'm going to thread all this through here. And actually, this I need, I shouldn't have put this on yet because I got to thread it through first, then put this on. Okay, here we go. This is uh, this is going to be flush here. And then I got my ring and I'm going to lock it in by gluing this in with some PVC cement. Then go ahead and I'm going to run this cable underneath this, underneath the shell, all the way back out this hole and I got a grommet for that too. You need a, actually the plastic in the back here is pretty thick, so you need one of those grommets with a wider gap in it. Okay, I used just regular uh, PVC cement to glue those two pieces together. And there it is. So I'll hold it in that end. I orient, orientated the connector this way, so that way when I open it, like that. So it's basically to keep this thing from rotating in here. I'm going to use the same thing that I glued this to this which is not actually glue, it's a curing type of plastic. It's made by Bondic and basically what they give you is two pieces. This is a UV light which cures the, um, the compound. So basically you have this and you can put a small amount then apply the light for five six seconds and then it turns this, uh, it, it bonds it, it's hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the, um, on the back end here, just to keep it from rotating. Okay, it's very important that they say to make sure you scuff up the plastic, so that way it has uh, some place to bite on. So just take some sandpaper or emery paper So what you do is just go ahead and um, apply a thin layer. They actually have some videos on this. And if you need a thicker layer, you go ahead and just uh, build it up. After the first layer, you apply this for five seconds. Do the other side. So the advantage of this is you don't have to wait for it to dry. So after applying the light, stuff should be uh, hard. So basically the UV light causes it to cure and um, harden. So that's the same stuff that I use to bond the lock ring, the ring, uh, screw ring onto this piece of plastic. And actually they say that once that stuff is hardened um, after the UV light, then you can actually sand it and paint it just like any other on the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, go ahead and run this, the cable underneath, 
and out through the back. Okay, here's these um, the base put back together. Put these uh, four plus these two screws. You gotta be real. It's really you gotta make sure those cables are not are running right down the center, and it's not on top of these when you're trying to screw them back in. Otherwise, it's not gonna fit nice and tight. It's really, really tight fit. Um, this is finicky too a little bit. You gotta try to hold that with the spring, putting it back together. Um, here's it coming out the back on the grommet. You can see that the back edge of this hits the grommet a little bit, so it pushes it out a little bit, but I'm okay with that. So, um, let me go ahead and put the top back on and reassemble it a little bit and put it, run again, put it in the car. Oh, there's one other thing. I noticed that because this has to be mounted so low to give clearance to this uh, push button that I'm going to gonna I won't be able to get this pad back in so I'll have to trim around the edge here a little bit so that way I can slide it back in let me go ahead and work on that and see how that comes out okay to get this to fit in here because it's such a close clearance on the bottom here I had to actually trim it and actually cut this piece out and use a dremel to thin thin this out right here so naturally it fits uh it's pretty good now it's actually a nice tight fit in there. So, um, that's what it looks like. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and um, go ahead and um, press it out. Okay, this is the way it was before iPod here, connect it here. Now I get to uh, use my armrest, which has a connector in here, so I can move the whole setup of my iPod and clean it up, clean up this mess here a little bit. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, this is what it looks like. Got rid of. I ran those cables underneath the console up from the back here and it's pretty easy just look watch some YouTube videos on how to pop off this back cover and take out the screws in the cup holder and you kind of lift it up so you can tuck the wires I tucked it on the right side and then now the iPods in here connected so this way keep it out of sight when I'm parked somewhere So it's nice and neat. This is what it looks like with the cabling. Comes out, ran behind the bracket, and snuck it underneath the, the side here, and ran it all the way up to the front. There. So I'm kind of happy with that. I want to get the iPod out from view. And now I have it in my um, armrest here. So, hope this video helps you, and um, good luck if you do the mod on yours.